Hello and welcome to another episode of That Podcast. My name is Ryan Janke, and as always, I'm joined by Pastor DJ Lura and Sarah DeYoung. And today, we have a special guest. I always want to say special guest referee, but he's not a referee. <laughs> True, he's wearing too many stripes on his shirt for that. They're the wrong direction. Yes. <laughs> And the wrong not color. all of them. The wrong color. <laughs> the wrong color, not, yeah. not the wrong is, direction. This is a, a, a wide plaid, I would call that. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Mark Soljum back with us today. Mark, how are you doing? I'm well. Thanks for having me in the podcast studio. Yes. It's, it's an honor to be here. <laughs> converting... <laughs> Converting these melodious tones into a podcast. Did you see? Did you see how you can't see underneath the mask, but you could just hear the dripping sarcasm on that? <laughs> it's such an honor Fair to be here. here. No, 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 no. It's <laughs> wonderful in here. So glad you guys invited Don't me back. Don't the place. <laughs> well, you keep checking your watch. <laughs> Let's keep this podcast moving. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm so glad that that Mark is here because um, we have some we have some news. Yes, want to share? Yes, we do. He uh, does. We had uh, the uh, Atonement Church's annual meeting, and something very exciting took place. Uh, Mark, can you can you let us know what's going on? Yes, we voted in our budget for the next year. All right, <laughs> yeah. so that was very exciting. <laughs> Where's yeah, the like cha ching? <laughs> <laughs> is that what you were going for? As exciting as budgetary <laughs> conversation is on the podcast, uh, no, that we, is we, not where I was going. We also approved last year's minutes. Oh. We did. Yep. Make sure in the uh, takes for this, you just throw like GameStop <laughs> economics, really boost the views on it. Because <laughs> we're talking uh, <laughs> finance. <laughs> what I was talking about is Doge. Uh, it, it, it is now official. Something that's been been uh, present through through action in Mark is that he has the gift of public ministry, and public ministry takes many forms. But traditionally in the Lutheran Church, we speak of those who are called to public ministry. We call them pastors, and a letter of call is the official. Um, contract or transaction that a church gives, trusting that the Holy Spirit has called this person into this role, that call is validated by the people of God through a letter of call that was issued to Mark, mm -hmm. with the caveat, I believe, um, calling him to be a pastor of this church. And there was ro roarous applause of, mm -hmm. of I, and uh, the letter of call was issued. Now, I was asking Mark, part of that process also is that there's usually a 30-day time of discernment that can be allowed mm -hmm. for whatever candidate is issued a letter of call. But he shared with me that um, the senior pastor gave him like like a mission impossible. Yep. Like you, you have 30 seconds. Yes. You've got uh, it was actually like 30 hours, right? <laughs> you got a day. <laughs> I, I think he said, I, I hope he didn't take us down this path just to give us another 30 days to keep us waiting. <laughs> that would have been great. Yeah. Well, uh, now I'll I'm going to see. Yeah. Sorry, I'll have, to, I'll have to talk this over. <laughs> now it's not a time to play hard to get, I don't think. <laughs> so. And so that means that, that Mark, who has met all the requirements of our wider church body, mm -hmm. uh, Lutheran Congregations and Mission for Christ, or the wider church association, he has his Master of Divinity. He has been um, approved for call in LCMC churches, and so um, this ministry he was he was our director of, of ministries, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Which is a, a shorthand way of saying the executive director who handles all of the kind of the the um, administration of much of the church, but also has all kinds of ministry gifts through through music through. Preaching, all these things have developed over your time here over the last six years, correct? Mm -hmm. And so it's a longer process for call in Mark's case, but what we were doing as a congregation was not seeking a new position, but recognizing the ministry that was present and having Mark met all of the requirements for ordination. Mm -hmm. It was validating that. Uh, and so he has been called to be our executive pastor as compared to executive director. Mm -hmm. Um uh, for ministry, not just of word and service, which is what we speak of lay ministry, who's mm -hmm. not a pastor. Pastors are given the ministry of word and sacrament, and that's what Mark has now been recognized as having. Um, and so it's a very exciting time. It's Reverend Master Master Pastor. Is that? <laughs> yeah, that, that's sort of an ongoing joke. Uh, 
be, because I, I, I actually uh, uh, um, uh, sensed the call to ministry back in college and uh, um, started down this track and I started to get my MDiv at Luther Seminary back in um, it was in the 20th century. Wasn't uh, it? Yes, it was. <laughs> wow, that's. Thank you for that encouraging word. <laughs> how'd that, um, how'd that, welcome aboard. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, and I, I actually did not finish the the Master of Divinity back then. I, I got a master's uh, degree from Luther, yep. um, and um, uh, was not quite ready to step into that role. Um, God had some more preparation for me to do. Real quickly, the degree that you got, because people may not know this too, when you go to seminary, it's not just about get, the the Master of Divinity degree is a master's degree, which is required after a, a bachelor's degree for education in order to enter into a pastoral role within Lutheran circles. It's not like that in, in many other mm-hmm. Christian traditions. Many other Christian traditions will recognize someone in a congregation who has leadership abilities and um, empower them to be their pastor. Ours is a bit more difficult. There's a requirement of so much education. Um, but rather than getting the MDiv, which is, is you think about it, it's kind of more like a trade degree. You go to learn how to be a welder. You get the credentials for that. Mm-hmm. A Master of Divinity is the, is the credentialing, the education to be an ordained pastor in the Lutheran Church. But you got, did you get a Master of Theology or a Master of Sacred Arts? Or what was the Master's in? Yeah, it was actually Christian Leadership. Christian Leadership, perfect. Yes, which, you know. That seems to fit. Seems seems to be where I was at it yeah. anyways. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I finished that up, so I have that Master's degree, and then um, um, I, I started working with the Master's Institute in uh, um, the Twin Cities, and finished, uh, they transferred in some of my credits, and I finished up the requirements for the MDiv mm-hmm. um, last year. So I technically have two masters then, um, and then uh, and then this letter of call, which I did in fact sign in under the thirty hours or thirty seconds or <laughs> some. So it didn't self destruct. Yeah. It did not self destruct, and and it's uh, as as I handed it back to the senior pastor who quickly filed it. So <laughs> I said, Ah, I have you now. So so all of the basically the letter of the law, all the paperwork is in order. Mm -hmm. What now remains is for the the event that the congregation recognizes publicly. The, um, I I shouldn't say it's not a mantle and it's not like a higher thing. It's a, it's basically putting on a yoke of responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's it, you know, we're the priesthood of all believers, but pastors are set aside for specific responsibilities, not specific benefits. Cause we're not higher. We're not holier, but we're called to, we're entrusted by the congregation to call them out on their stuff, mm-hmm. call a sin, a th- call a thing a thing, call a sin a sin, and to forgive in the name of Jesus Christ through preaching, through sacraments, and you know, as the t- title pastor implies, it's a shepherd. It's that leadership. It's like mm-hmm. that leadership piece, mm-hmm. and so there's there's multiple qualities and responsibilities. Um, once the ordination takes place publicly, that's the congregation saying yes. We publicly recognize the call. Not just that you have an inward calling, but that you have an outward call to ministry in this place in this season. So mm-hmm. it's it's a very exciting time. Yes, and and that so is. So how soon are we doing that? Well, it looks like <laughs> uh, Palm Sunday actually is the oh, oh, is going to be the day. Nice. So what is that in like three weeks? I don't know. We're in the middle of Lent, and yeah, I can never like tell two when. Two and a half, <laughs> I think. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's exciting. That's really exciting. Nice. Yeah, I'm. I may even find a suit. Uh, I think I own one. Really? Yeah. Well, really? You never know. This is going to what a day. <laughs> I can't wait. I, to I'll, see I'll at least suit. I'll at least wear my dress pants. So <laughs> instead of my my normal jeans. You're, uh, you're not going to break out the wrinkled clerical from from back in the day and uh uh no, I I do have yeah, I do have a clerical collar. Um I I may use it sometime for, you know, well there's that Halloween thing coming up, so Yeah, yeah there you <laughs> go. Use that. The nice thing about atonement that I've really appreciated and it it brings me back to my own roots. Being a, a pastor across the country, they expect different clothing on their pastors, depending on where you're located. Mm-hmm. And the clerical is the it's it's the finest fashion from 1521. <laughs> mm, um, yep, very very hip then, isn't it though? And it's then very European. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then they put on top of you. Um, so you wear a clerical, and then on top of it is what's called an alb, which always reminded me of if you've ever seen the old movie uh, A Christmas Carol, mm-hmm. when when. Um, Scrooge is sleeping and taking around. He has that hat that he wears and the yeah. long dress. Yeah. That's an alb. 
Really? That's yeah. And you put that on top, and then on top of that goes a stole. I and thought then, that was a nightgown. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's what an alb looks right. like to me. And so then on top of the <laughs> alb goes what's called a stole, and pastors wear stoles because it's a sign of the yoke of ministry that's placed upon them by the congregation. Oh, and okay. the stole is basically a scarf. Mm-hmm. And then along with all that, you take a rope, wrap it around your waist, and pull it tight, and there you are ready ready to, to worship in the 21st century. Um, and there's nothing wrong with any of that. There's nothing you wrong. Mean, you mean the 16th century? Sorry, yeah, the 16th, 14th, <laughs> fit, yeah. Whatever. There's nothing wrong with that, and, and but that comes down to an individual congregation's what's called a polity, mm-hmm. like their, their identity. Atonement's identity has been... One that it, I've seen in the Midwest, it's the one I grew up with, where pastors didn't wear all that stuff. If anything, if they were dressed up, it would be a suit and a tie. Mm-hmm. But atonement is a, a, even a freer polity where there's not a whole lot of expectation as far as clothing, just that you're moderately dressed. I mm-hmm. mean, it's, it's nothing more than that. And mm-hmm. that's great. That's really freeing because the world has changed so much that even the, the traditional garb of a, of a, of a clergyman in worship mm-hmm. can seem odd and and almost off putish to, yeah. to put, or put offish. I don't know what the term is. Uh, I think offensive it, maybe. And and I think it it makes you less approachable. There you go. It's no. it makes you. I think for the modern person, it can make you less approachable. It almost does have that feeling of elevating. Mm-hmm. It does. On a reverse note, I can say that wearing a clerical, I think, saved my life on more than one case. Are they bulletproof? Or? Uh, sort of. Uh, <laughs> wow. There, were, there was on more than one occasion. Is this a solution to a pandemic that we're not aware of? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just think it, it kept me safer than, than if I hadn't had it on. And that was when I was a pastor in Philadelphia. There were some nights where I had to go to um, Thomas Jefferson Medical Center. It's, it's uh, this hospital in downtown Philly. And downtown Philly at that time, was a dangerous place during the night. During the daytime, you ha- you know people would go to the Liberty Bell and and you know mm-hmm. you'd go see, you know the place where the Declaration of Independence, Independence was signed, Hall. Independence Hall, yeah. Mm-hmm. But at nighttime, different story. Mm-hmm. And so um, Thomas Jefferson didn't have its own parking. You'd had to park a couple blocks away in one of the the parking garages. And when I would go there, the church I was. Um, serving expected me to wear a clerical. And that's just more on the East coast. There's a lot more Roman Catholics. It's just more, it, it's expected even by Lutheran churches. Mm-hmm. Um, and as I walked those blocks, I had a Bible in one hand, I had my clerical on and all of a sudden people were really friendly to me. <laughs> I had like more than one person. Act. Yeah. Oh yeah. I had more than one person say, how you doing Padre? Mm. How you doing father? And I just good. Just kept walking. Um, whereas if I was dressed in just normal garb rather than my uniform, mm-hmm. um, there would have been at least the expectation of more danger mm-hmm. than less. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. It, it, it just it is what it is. Yeah. So, excellent. Mm-hmm. Anyway, this is some good times. So the question that we are talking about is it appropriate to call you? Pastor Mark or Pastor Soljum, and what would you what would you prefer? Oh, gal, uh, that's I, interesting because uh, we call you Pastor DJ. Yep, we mm-hmm. call uh, Becky Pastor Becky, yeah. and I think Paul pre- prefers Christ. to be called Pastor Cross. Yes, um, yeah, um, I, I prefer Mark. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's been my name for oh, gal, you know. Long, long as I can remember. It's worked for this long. It, it has. You know, I think that's that's good, too, because when someone addresses me as DJ, my first response isn't, it's Pastor DJ. <laughs> I think I think the title comes with a building of trust with people. Mm-hmm. But along with that is, you know, is it okay to even use that title for you? Because it's a, it's a sign of respect for the office that you hold <laughs> prior to Palm Sunday. What do you think? You know, uh, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I think that'd be a great question for Paul because he knows all, he's like a walking Wikipedia on yeah. such matters. Yes. Um, and, and as he uh, shared with us earlier this week, his liturgical bona fides dwarf mine. So. They, it does. It does. Um, <laughs> he's I, much more. I mean, I sort on. of assumed that uh, the officialness happens with, with the ceremony. Um, 
but you know, I have uh, relatives in the military, and sort of they take on the the work. Yeah. Um, prior to the promotion. Yes. But then the promotion hits, and then it's official, and you know, then the 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 uniform has changed. Right. So, um, you know, it it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter a ton to me. Yeah. Um, in fact, you know, some people are going to, like you said, some people will refer to you as Pastor DJ, and that's just sort of how, how they roll. Um, and, uh, um, I mean, I think, I think that this is my, my, my big thing about this, this milestone here is, on the one hand, I'm, I'm excited. On the other hand, it's like I've been doing this work for, mm-hmm. for a long time. You know, I've been at Atonement since 2013, so... Um, well, I've been at Atonement for longer, but I've been on staff since 2013. Um, I think it was summer of 2013. So that's like seven years I've been doing this this type of work. And um, I see this, um, um, I was sort of hesitant at first to, to finish my degree and, and to do this because I didn't want, um, I, um, I see it as such a servant leadership. Mm-hmm. And I, I've seen people over the years sort of lord that title over other people, mm-hmm. and that's just not something that's that's built into me. And I, and I, you know, it's not something that that um, that I ever wanted. I, I I mean, I I love being part of the direction we're going. I love the um, to work with people and and move them forward, and and that's what really gets me up in the morning. Yeah. Um, and um, um, the title is more, yeah. Um, Thank you for for um, putting that trust in me, but I, I don't want it ever to sort of right. um, uh, be a stumbling block for people, and and that's why I think um, um, I'm very comfortable with with the tournament's polity of of sort of uh, laid back and and not sort of high and mighty um, clothes that differentiate you from right. from others because uh, I think that can get in the way, and I, I think th- that can. Can, uh, I think um, you're absolutely right there. It really, it, it, the danger is you put ordained ministers on a pedestal mm-hmm. to the detriment of what's called lay ministry. Yes. When, but I like the way it works here where you have people that are set aside for specific tasks. Yeah. Um, I actually hate the word lay ministry. I know. Um, I know. I, I agree with you. And, and I've hated <laughs> it for 20 years uh, because... I, I know too many people that are like, oh, well, you know, you're not actually a pastor. Right. Like, there's some amazing people doing amazing things, and yep. they don't have the title. Don't look down on them because of that. Right. Um, so the, uh, uh, you know, uh, part of the fulfilling all the requirements was to sit down with um, some pastors in the LCMC and sort of talk about my faith story and, and how I saw my role. And I said, I expressed how firm I believer I am in the priesthood of all believers Mm -hmm. that we all have a job here. This is not just the, the sort of ordained ministries job. Um, their job is to equip the saints and to move them forward. And he said, well, do you even need them? I said, well, you're going to need leaders. Yeah. Um, but the leaders should be washing people's feet. Um, Mm -hmm. they shouldn't be dressing up and parading in front of them. Right. Well, and that's why speaking about the the requirement for an MDiv is important. I do I do like to have nice washed <laughs> jeans though before I get in front of you. I, I mean, you know, I I do brush my hair. Yeah, so. I was going to say that I think that the the importance of pastors in general is in a leadership role. It's to empower and equip the saints to carry out their ministry to mm-hmm. to expand the kingdom of God. That really is what it's supposed to be. Yep. Um, the reason for the the requirements is so that the gospel is not diluted or or turned in a skewed in a, in a direction that's not true to the gospel because all it takes is a slight little angle turn on one day 10 years down the road your church has moved far away from the gospel because it's focusing on something other than mm-hmm. than the mission and ministry and the good news of Jesus Christ that's i think the importance for uh, the seminary training piece for the the theology and the in the languages and and really and, and as a time of discernment, um, but I agree with you that we can make we we can elevate the office mm-hmm. to something that it's not intended to be. The office is is meant to be actually lower than the baptized saint. Mm-hmm. 
it's a it's servant leadership, just like you said. Yeah. Um, to empower and equip others to to live and follow Jesus every day, not just on Sunday. Well, the good book says those that teach will be judged more harshly. Right. Mm-hmm. So. So you got that going for you. <laughs> it, it, it did pop into my head before I signed that. Like, mm, okay. Oh, what am I getting myself into? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, agree, I totally agree with you, though. We have seen um, um, churches that we know um, um, that do not have a firm foundation in the text and, and, and in the Word of God and their theology has led them in a place that, that uh, I think it shouldn't have. And, and well, that, and, 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 and you, you can see it because it, it hinders the expanding of the kingdom. It hinders the gospel. Yep. And it's easier to spot, I think, in Protestantism because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in Roman Catholicism, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not a Catholic. Um, I have friends who are Catholics. Um, but at least they have sort of some people at the top going, eh, it's not that. Right. Mm, it's not that. Right. Um, and, uh, well, that, that is the strength of the Catholic tradition, the magisterium. Yeah, that keeps them. Of course, that I mean. But if it's, the magisterium, it, it's my understanding or my theology that they've sort of drifted anyway. Sure. Um, and you mean you know, you're Lutheran? What a surprise! I, I am. I am. Uh, yes, yeah, surprise, surprise. <laughs> um, but you can see that sort of play out in real time in Protestantism in the United States because yeah. there's there's so many flavors. You're like, well, you want that. Uh, uh, you know, if you if you look at the Bible that way, well, then that's probably these people over here. And if you want to look at the Bible a little bit like that way, it's probably these people over here. Yep. And, and uh, you know, you go to a larger metropolitan area, you could probably visit one of those places every Sunday. And you know what I think is, outside of the Roman Catholic Church, I think there's something very interesting happening in our world, 21st century, um, at least in, in the United States as I see it. But But you also see these movements happening in other parts of the world as well, Africa, Asia this explosion of the gospel. Um, but I think there's like a sifting going on in the United States that's not about denominations, Protestant, Catholic. The, the Catholic Church will always have the magisterium, the, the, the Holy See, the, the, you know, the Pope, and, and the authority of the, of the church leaders that way to, to steer them. But in Protestantism, it's almost like you have this sifting going on where it doesn't matter if you're Baptist, Baptist Lutheran, Evangelical, Charismatic. Do you believe that the Bible is true? Mm-hmm. and people aligning around what that means. Do you believe that Jesus is your Lord and Savior and people aligning around what that means in one camp? And it, it's almost like there's a, there's a out, outside of that, that's what's defining what camp you can put people in in the United States today. It's, not, it's no longer denomination. It's do you believe this or don't you on whatever the issue may be, um, especially in Christianity. So it's, it's an interesting time in that regard, I think. And it makes LCMC interesting as well because LCMC is a, I, you, uh, you could call it a micro synod, an association of churches that come out of the Lutheran tradition who've already said, we believe this about the Bible. We believe that the Bible is true. This is where we stand. And we're completely open for anybody who wants to come, who agrees with that, to come and be a part of, of uh, how we do church together. Mm-hmm. So. Cool. You're going to say something. No, I'm I'm speechless. So, I have that effect. Yes. I, when the eyes start to lull over, it's like, I, I oh, didn't I got him again. I didn't say I was falling asleep. I said I was speechless. So I, I'm I'm honored to be uh, called to atonement. I'm excited about that. I'm looking forward to the ordination. Um, but more importantly, I'm looking forward to the work going on with with this fine community. And uh, I think. God has some amazing things planned for this this uh, congregation and, and this region, and uh, um, I, you know I've got some harebrained ideas that that I think would be awesome to move forward with, and uh, um, we'll see where God. You, you, well, you've had harebrained ideas that we've already <laughs> moved forward with. Uh, yeah. So let, let's let's transition. Well, I mean, a I bit. think that's part of my leadership gift: <laughs> have a harebrained idea, make it happen. So let's transition a little bit in talking about that because. Um, even prior to your ordination, you have been a leader in the last, well, last six years, but especially in the last year in transitioning atonement to have a louder voice using technology mm-hmm. specifically. Um, 
Yeah, we, we, I bought a bullhorn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we stand and a, on the and corner. A, and a no, and a noisemaker that you that you wrecked, DJ. Oh yeah, well, man, it's yeah. It's in the shop. It's getting it's fixed. It's in the shop. Okay, good. <laughs> I can't pay the bill yet, so they won't release it to me. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to manually clap now. <laughs> Do you think you could hire Michael Winslow to come in and uh, uh, probably dated myself yeah, there? Yeah, Sarah has no idea nope. who Michael Winslow is. It's the finest actor from 1983 she, to 1984. She's now Googling Michael Winslow. I'm guessing he has to be in some type of Disney movie. Oh, uh, no. boy. No, okay. those weren't Disney movies. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> But so, so let's, so, oh gosh, I don't want to make this super technical, but can you speak a little bit about the, the transition pieces that were necessary for this last year for us to have an even louder, as you put it, bullhorn mm. to share the gospel well, so beyond these walls? If you're listening to this 10 years from now, uh, <laughs> and it is 31, there was a, an odd thing called a pandemic that happened in uh, 2020. Um, what were some of the other names we heard for that thing? Uh, pandemonium. It's a Panda Express. Uh, Panda Express. Oh, we're in a Panera, Panera bread. Panera. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. I had Panda Express yesterday. It was very good. It's <laughs> um, the orange chicken. Um, so, yeah, we had... Um, we were faced with, uh, um, back in January uh, of 2020, there was kind of this, oh, by the way, you should be aware there's a virus in um, Wuhan, China, and uh, we don't think it'll come here, but just, you know, we're following this story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then February, it was like, well, it's no longer restricted to China, but we don't think it'll you know, affect the U.S. too much. And then March, it was <sighs> like, oh, it's in the U.S., so what's what's funny is yeah it was about back in February you're like oh we better we better keep our our eye on this maybe yeah. it was even January and uh, got some some Zoom uh, Zoom license and and you were taking step forward steps forward and I'm going Mark's getting a little wild here yeah and- right <laughs> yeah yeah I got some funny looks like. This isn't going to be that bad. <laughs> two weeks, Mark. Come on. I'm telling you, two weeks. I'm standing by it. I've been saying it since last <laughs> yeah. February. Yeah, and then it was uh, <laughs> it was the second Sunday in March, I think, and uh, um, we decided that we had to, to discontinue in-person worship because it wasn't safe for a while. And, yeah, we, we were joking about two weeks, and I said, yeah, I think – Maybe more like eight. Well, e- mm. even that, even that sort of started as a, as a little bit of a joke. Remember the for, for a couple of weeks we were telling people, yeah, you know, uh, give uh, give fist bumps or or uh, tap your shoes together instead of yes. shake hands. And mm-hmm. yes, you and I demonstrated a a very which didn't catch on. The kid, no, the kid uh, didn't. Uh, sadly, it, no. They're like, you know what? We'd rather just go through the pandemic than <laughs> tap our shoes together. I thought it was a, I thought it was amazing <laughs> greeting. Yes, first I'm, right shoe tap, then left shoe tap. <laughs> do you guys remember um, Kid and Play? Oh yeah, that. Do you remember uh, their dance with the the high top? Yes, yeah. The, the to- mm-hmm. they had this whole dance thing that they did. This uh, where they they hit the feet together and then spun around. And hit See, the that's what we needed was a clever yeah. song to go with it. Well, yeah. if, we, if we had the, Ryan and Mark going to make you jump, jump, you know, <laughs> something like that. That was crisscross. But I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, was it? Yeah. Doesn't so copyright doesn't, infringement. Doesn't Sorry. know his 80s hip hop rap. So. so yeah, Sarah's eyes I are know, glazing I over. I know it. You're I know that you. song. Also, oh. I got my co- second round of COVID shots, so I'm a little sleepy right now. <laughs> <laughs> So, anyway. yeah, where were Continue, we? Continue, please. I don't even re- Oh, yeah, I so know. March 15th. Yeah, March 15th. It was going to be about eight weeks. Right, and so at the beginning of this, we said, well, okay, let's let's figure out a way to provide some sort of online presence so that we don't just sort of shut up, yeah. shut down shop, you know, mm-hmm. and, and uh, don't do anything. Right. Um, and there were churches that were like, well, we're just going to wait it out. And I thought, it seems like it might be more long term than that, and and we had talked about sort of a broadcast ministry, anyways. So we thought, well, let's go ahead with it. So then there was the the question: Okay, um, how how many how much resources should we put into this? You know, should we um, right now? I got a tripod and an and a iPod that I can just grab, and you know, we'll just put it on the thing and and make it uh, happen, Captain. Make it happen, and we'll put it on Facebook Live, and that'll be mm-hmm. the end of it. Yep. But uh, uh, Ryan has. 
injured himself over here or something. You okay, Ryan? Yeah, podcasting is dangerous. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll keep on going. I just hit myself in the face with that. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Continue. <laughs> Need too, a first aid kit in the too podcast. Too bad this isn't on video. We should describe play by play over <laughs> Let here. Let me see your eyes. Right. Are they dilated? <laughs> yeah. I didn't get a shot. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Sarah is a caregiver, if anybody's curious why she got her yeah. shot right now. So I'm glad that you did. Yeah. Um, so we, you know, we had the discussion, like, how much do we want to put into this? And and uh, uh, we quickly decided that, that uh, man, I, I hate watching things that are, you know, filmed from a, from an iPad and the sound's horrible and, and, uh, it's not engaging at all. So we said, okay, well, let's put some money into it. So we started looking into what it would take and, and, uh, uh, we carved out, I got a, a team together, people that do video and, and, uh, audio and, um, other things. I said, all right, let's, let's sort this out. Where are we headed? Um, so we kind of came up with a rough plan, you know, here's, here's what a phase a would look like to get you going. Uh, here's what a B would look like. And then, you know, like, oh, I don't know, four or five years down the road, here's what, <laughs> what this phase would look like. Well, that four or five years, you know, uh, as the pandemic sort of got worse and, and, uh, it, it quickly became sort of crazy mm-hmm. on the coasts. And then we had more of a delayed thing. It didn't really hit, hit us until sort of what summer fall in my head. I just picture this like COVID wave moving inward. <laughs> yeah. It had, to, it had to get over the mountains <laughs> and on. then it smacked right yep. here and then did this thing, you know, going back in the yeah, opposite direction. Exactly what happened. Uh, so th- yeah, we just sort of compressed that timeline and, and went from, uh, I, what the first Sunday we had a camera Yep. and, uh, uh, we were piping the sound in from our soundboard uh, with nobody in the room, and there was wires laying all over the floor. And <laughs> it was a hazard in there. It, it was. A trip it, was hazard. it was. And and we had some people who are prone to tripping that were walking through there that I was worried about. <laughs> uh, I won't name any names, but Ryan Jenke. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, and uh, yeah, so every week it just sort of grew. But you know, everybody in the United States was trying to get a, a streaming broadcast thing up and going too. So. Uh, I remember those first couple months. It was that it was, was a difficult part too. Was just yeah. getting the stuff. Yeah, it was like uh, all right. Um, I found you know a mom and pop shop in Iowa that's got a camera, and I'm like, can you overnight it? And like, well, it costs you forty dollars extra. I'm like, fine, you know. Yeah. So uh, uh, thankfully, the the board. It was um, like looking for toilet paper that time too. Yeah. You know, toilet yeah. paper and cameras were yeah. impossible. Yes. To find. Well, yeah, and, and thankfully Which you is were sort on of t- bizarre if you put those two together. But <laughs> <laughs> thankfully you were on top of that though, because uh, I think you beat out a lot of a lot of uh, the the sort of there's a run on yeah cameras now. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, and I think if we would have done a wait and see, we would have gotten caught in that. Right. But because uh, uh, we met with the board and said, "What do you think about this?" and they're like, "Go for it." Um, very proactive. They gave us yeah. the green light, um, and we decided it was important to do. And so, um, based upon some of those uh, those experts in the field, we we knew where we were, where we were headed, mm-hmm. and got the stuff we needed. And yeah, uh, um, I I kind of laughed because it seemed like the FedEx or the UPS guy was here every day <laughs> yeah. for like, you know, three what? three months, and every day they'd bring in another box, and they're like, "What are you doing?" Was it in April or May where you had built like a like a little fort out of boxes outside of your office? <laughs> Do you remember that? Yep. <laughs> yeah, it, it we was, had we'd. Re- I don't remember what arch. was in those boxes. I don't know. Who knows? But some uh, sort of equipment. Yeah, but it was it was just getting to be such a pile mm-hmm. of equipment that yeah. It's funny because uh, uh, Mark, Mark on, had to come it's in on the on, Facebook. So yep. if you're a boomer, you can go look that up. <laughs> Mark had to come in on his off hours to uh, go through credit card receipts, I think. for. <laughs> for yeah, and then finally, uh, uh, Marjean Smith in our office bailed me out. She's like, I'll help you with those. Because, it, yeah, I mean, it just got to be sort of overwhelming. Because of that very thing, you, you can't just sort of wait and get an order together uh, like a normal person would do and, and you know, get oh, all these eight things I need to get. Well, I'll put them together. It was like, well, I found one in Amazon and one in B&H Photo and one on Adorama Camera. So um, I'm not getting paid for those sponsors. Things. <laughs> but if they would like to. You think but if they'd like to, you can reach me at Mark. You know, you got to think about 
the craziness of all that coming in, it they were investments. Yes. And yeah. this the congregation responded. I mean, it it was so much support, so much um, uh, partnership in in giving of funds. I mean, uh, the money was there to cover the cost of all these things, so that we would be able to retrofit. Yeah, the mm-hmm. the church building to be able to do this kind of ministry. It's it was pretty um, very humbling, and just gave just a sense of overwhelming gratitude um, for the love of of this church family. Mm-hmm. And yeah. thankfully, Mark, you had a background that um, we were able to do a lot of this stuff here, the the running cables and and uh, doing those sorts of things that. Well, we'll just take care of it right now rather than... The, the mm, tech smarts to, yeah. to do it or figure out how to do it. Right. Well, you know, I, I think this is one of the things that, that I can look back and see God's hand in my life as I've uh, grown older and uh, um, how... Uh, so I, I, I mentioned earlier that I, I started that feel of called ministry in college. I went to seminary, um, but I didn't go straight into pastoral um, ministry. And, um, I actually spent 10 years working in it, um, which was, uh, um, um, very rewarding time and a time when I learned things that I use a lot today. Mm-hmm. And I'm not just talking about how to run network cable. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I did plenty of that. Um, but things like, uh, how to manage a project, how to, uh, um, uh, find great deals, how to, how to negotiate, how to, um, 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 how to lead a team. Uh, mm-hmm. These are a lot of things that I learned sort of in that workplace job uh, that I, I use now and have been a blessing to me. Yeah. So, yeah. It, Some things almost, I wish I could forget. It but. almost <laughs> seems like God knows what he's doing. You ever think about that? I mean, it mm. kind of seems that way. Like, mm. you know, it, it's not always the way we, it's not always the, the path that we want to take, but it's like God is giving us the tools that we need for what's coming next. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, I I, uh, um, um, I I think that uh, uh, God has uniquely created me in a certain way, and I've always wanted to serve Him, and uh, um, that's why I guess I'm just excited to continue to do what I do here, and uh, I'm just um, honored to be a part of it. And you know, uh, initially too, we talked about um, you know what what are we doing here? Are we um, that that was sort of a philosophy of ministry when we started to build the broadcast system, mm-hmm. right? is this a Band-Aid to cover until we can get people back in the building? Mm-hmm. Um, or is that's this... That's strategy A. That's strategy A. That's the iPad on a, on a tripod thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, or do we want this to be um, uh, capable of doing other things? And is it sort of an outreach tool for people that would like to get to know Atonement before they step foot in the building? Um, it's become a, um, um, a shut-in ministry um, that, yeah. we, that we deliver... Um, services to, to people that, that don't have internet and can't get connected. Um, it's a lake outreach during the summer. It, yes. <laughs> uh, we have, uh, we have uh, both a snowbird um, effect and a lake effect here at Atonement, um, which uh, for those of you that don't know what those terms sort of mean in this part of the country, it means that if you retired, oftentimes you head to the south for a few months in the winter. Arizona, Florida, Texas, baby. Yep. Yep. And then you come back. And some of them find churches down there. And some of them sort of, uh, uh, I've been told, they're like, well, we don't really have a church that we, we love down there. Um, but a lot of them now are staying connected to atonement throughout the year. Yep. And then uh, we have members that like... Um, uh, well, can I, can I add something to that? Part of the reason that they're able to... It's not just like a video ministry. Yep. When when you come to worship Sunday morning, no matter where you are, if it's 9 o'clock Central Time or 10.30 Central Time, when you join us online, you're joining live worship and, and worshipers that are online with you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. So it's, it's I don't like the term virtual because it's, it's real. It's really mm-hmm. happening, but you're in, you're in the comfort of your own home. But yep. you're able to be in church in real time yep. with everyone else who's worshiping. Right. That's, 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 the, that's the part of launching this online ministry that's more than a broadcast um, or even just like a video service, it's church happening yeah. in real time, and that's really cool. Yeah, yep. if, there's mm-hmm. people, if there's people, if you're watching live, you can engage and mm-hmm. Connect, mm-hmm. connect with people. Yeah. 
Yep. And then uh, uh, the the flip side of the snowbirds is that that we have the what do we call them? Lake birds. I don't know. Lake you people. called it lake effect, but I was thinking <laughs> lake of effect. Snow Swamp yeah. people. <laughs> they, <laughs> <laughs> no, they. I mean, they have a uh, they have a cabin where they love yeah. to spend time because the winters can be long in this area, and when it's nice outside, uh, people of this this part of the country are uh, uh, rightly so taking advantage of all the time they can, mm-hmm. uh, enjoying God's creation outside. And so uh, a, a lot of those window when it's not frozen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and a lot of those people said, Hey, you know, this summer, uh, we just, we, we were there every week because you know, we were at the lake cabin, we popped it online and joined the congregation and then went back out and sat on the lake. And I thought, wow, I, I would like that. Yeah, I think exactly. some, I think some cool. even watched on, on the lake yes. Yes. on the boat. Yeah. Take the pontoon out and worship. <laughs> yep. So, uh, Th- that's unique, and and then, you know, where where can we take this in the future? We've talked about um, there are many congregations um, in, in uh, smaller areas around here that are having troubles sort of finding a pastor um, because there aren't enough to go around right now. And we've talked about uh, how can we how can we empower those congregations? How can we help? There's probably some very amazing leaders in that in that congregation that are doing a lot of ministry, but just need some extra resources. And so how can we um, use the things that we've developed here to help them? How can we uh, help them with teaching, with, uh, with small group ministry, with confirmation, with Sunday school? Mm -hmm. Um, These are some of the things we're already doing for ourselves that we could leverage with this technology that we now have. And we just have to, um, that's an exciting piece looking forward, how we're going to sort of do that. And uh, um, you know, uh, would uh, what does that look like? I don't know yet, um, yeah. but a fun conversation to have. Mm-hmm. I, and not just not just walking alongside already established congregations, but with the content that we've been developing, we have the opportunity. It, it actually in my head in my head it's it's crystal clear how to do this. Mm. But actually, things well, are always crystal clear in my aren't head. They? <laughs> yeah. Um. The the harder part for planting satellite locations, we've already taken care of. And I think about those places in like Arizona or folks that I know that moved to North Carolina that are still tuning in and connecting with us every week Mm -hmm. when things open up again, well, they can have a house church Mm -hmm. right there in their location. That's still connected with us. um, But can start ministry on the ground in those different places. I mean, that's, that's the exciting thing to me of, of the, the, the chance or the, at least the opportunity to start satellites not just in the Fargo Moorhead area, but really all over the country yeah. or all over the world. world. Yep. You know, and I think it's important to point out um, you can't um, that that being a Christian is two parts, right? Mm-hmm. There's the sort of love God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind um, and all your strength, mm-hmm. and then there's the love neighbor as yourself, and um, um, you can join the online worship and um, be worshiping. Uh, but that local community piece is, is um, very exciting too yep. and, and very important. And so, yeah, I mean, as we're talking about leveraging this, um, we can use some of the teaching, the tools to build a community where people can start caring for one another and their community around them mm-hmm. um, based upon this. And uh, uh, hopefully that, that uh, the Holy Spirit can use that to do something amazing. So I'm excited to see where God might lead us. Yeah, it, it's really exciting. Two more weeks, guys. Two more weeks. <laughs> it's only going to be two weeks. Oh, yeah, until the pandemic's over. <laughs> well, so a quarter of us have gotten our shots here. So, yeah, that's wow. True. That's true. That's amazing. I, I did We're ahead of the general population of the United States in this podcast room right now. <laughs> well, I, when, when, I, think I'm, I think I'm like number 275 million out of 330 million people to get their shot. Like that's the category that that's, I'm in, so it's going to be one. Yeah. But I was, I was um, comforted by an article I read from, just came out from the National Institute of Health. Mm-hmm. Um, 90%, 95% efficacy rate for those who have been um, – who's already like gone through COVID-19, which I have and my family has, mm-hmm. that antibodies last eight months, 95% of cases, which is equivalent to the vaccine. Okay. It's 95% efficacious, which is great news for two reasons. If you've already had it, you're, you're more likely to be, um, your body will continue to fight off the virus and have antibodies for over half a year. Mm-hmm. But also if you've been vaccinated, the, the length of time that you would be um, able to 
repel that the the virus is like eight months mm-hmm. or something like that. It, it, at least that's yeah. like that's what they're thinking. So that's that's. That's good stuff to hear because when I yeah. first went through it, I was told it's about three months. Three months, yeah, that was the idea. Yep. Well, you know, the interesting thing about science, um, I'm, I'm married to a, a, a math professor, um, and the interesting thing about science is uh, as you gather more data and learn more things about that, you 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 can you know more about it. And yeah. so, you know, let's face it, this thing was sort of brand new January of 2020. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, there's diseases that have been around for years that we can, yep, this is how it works. This is yep. predictable. You know, like the chickens, the chicken pox vaccine. We know how long this lasts or tetanus. You mm-hmm. need a booster every 10 years, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, those have been around for a long time. This thing's brand new. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's fascinating to me that, well, uh, sometimes I hear, well, you know, the, the rec- recommendations keep changing. Well, um, that's a good sign. Mm-hmm. That's a good thing. That, that means they're, they're learning, uh, and they're, you know, they're adapting. So Where the just frustration like, comes in is when, when one authority says one thing and another authority says another thing and you're like, who am I supposed to listen to? Well, yeah, yeah. That yep, gets that's true. But I mean the same thing, uh, we need to be, uh, nimble and flexible in, in our congregation. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when a pandemic throws something at us and we think, oh, we'll just be close for two weeks. Um, you know, we, we pivoted. Yeah. So. And interestingly enough, we'd been talking about this broadcast ministry for years and sort of never pulled the trigger. Oh, on that would be nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that would be fun. We yeah. should do that. Someday we we'll time, do that. We should do that. <laughs> someday. It sounds good. Someday. Yeah. Yeah. We should get a podcast someday. And, well, and, you know, this is, yeah. the, this is the Holy Spirit works in two ways in my life, <laughs> I've noticed. Either it's sort of a gentle whisper, like, Mark, you know, this is, this is, this is where I need you to go. Or it's a swift kick. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and uh, more often than not, the swift kick is the one that really is needed to to mm-hmm. to get uh, action going. Right. <laughs> that you know, talking about ways to to stay connected, and a lot of what we've been doing more so now has been developing content, right? Yeah. Um, and using using video, using you know. Uh, Social media, those types of things to get to get the word out, mm-hmm. which is great. Um, but <laughs> was it November or December? You you and I had this conversation. You're like, hey, we should start a podcast. <laughs> oh, I remember of, of 2019, you mean? Yes, and yeah. I remember going, hey, that's a great idea. You really should do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna say, I I will stand by. I was a hater at first. Ryan was like, we should do a podcast. I'm like, all right, yeah, okay, we're gonna have what three weeks maybe worth of stuff to talk about. What are we going to talk about? And, but and I remember thinking, been... wow, that would be really neat. But um, with your background, Ryan, just thinking you're the one who really should head this. Cause I wouldn't know where to, where to start, mm-hmm. but I'd love to be like your sidekick or, or part of it. Yeah. Well then the pandemic happens and it's like, Hey, you guys should start a podcast. It's like, <laughs> okay, Mark, I guess we're going to start a podcast. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Hey, and, and I, I always consider myself uh, the enabler of uh, uh, things that you need. And uh, uh, r- the first the first episode we did this with, I don't re- remember what <laughs> we did it with. Three. Poor Sarah. The first three we did with, with some existing gear that we had to, to film Four. dramas. And, uh, uh, man, I, I watched Sarah, like, spend six hours editing a That's podcast. A editing. And then I'm like, there's got to be an easier way to do this. <laughs> then we bought some gear and, like, oh, okay. Yep done it's it's the same and then no you matter. got that corny dun, 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 <laughs> thing yep. at the beginning but you well, lost the ori- you lost the voice we the can now we can now say that the voice of that podcast the original voice of that podcast is now the executive pastor at atonement yep. Lutheran church mm. so you moved yes. up in the or, world or will that. technically be on after the ordination after technically mm. speaking yeah yeah uh, the the artist soon to be known as the executive. <laughs> there you go there you go I've often thought about changing my name to a symbol, so. <laughs> clerical? <laughs> clerical symbol? No. <laughs> the two symbols that crash together. Oh. Oh. Bum, 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 bum. All right. So it's been, it's been, it's been, wow, just an interesting time and really a time to see how God has been working. Mm-hmm. And I, I think for myself, I've, I've had more of an opportunity to have my eyes open to see what God is doing in the midst of all. Of all the season, mm-hmm. well, so. you know, it, it's it's uh, worth pointing out that um, during my first go around at seminary, um, you have a sort of an internship year, which I did not complete. But my internship supervisor was was the Reverend Doctor Paul mm-hmm. Cross, mm-hmm. Um, 
at, at so, time long ago. And so when, uh, uh, um, but we didn't finish our, our, our uh, work then. Were you technically uh, his Padawan this whole time? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> I think so. But, uh, or is uh, he a Sith Lord? Which one is it, really? I always two there are. So, <laughs> um, but then uh, uh, when Paul, uh, when we interviewed Paul to be the interim here, um, he told me this years later. He goes, yeah, we popped up with that video call. And he said, I saw your face. And he said, I guess I'm going to Fargo. I've got unfinished business. Hmm. Um, it was that clear. So it was that clear to him. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And uh, um, he was right. So I now have, I think I now have the record for the longest internship <laughs> in history. It's it's up there. The ne- the, I, I got to look in the Old Testament. <laughs> Elisha's, Elisha's may have been longer than yours. Okay. <laughs> Elisha it's to Elisha. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe in modern history. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Joshua and Moses maybe well, got yeah, me beat yeah. there. Joshua and Moses may have, but I, I mean, if it if it didn't actually stop the first time, I mean, we're we're in we're in multiple decades here. That's true. So centuries. <laughs> I, I, centuries. I'm not that old. Started in the twentieth. <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. It spanned two centuries. That's like a bad movie opening. An internship so long it spanned two centuries. <laughs> All right, well, to bring these two things together, the, the <laughs> ordination of, of uh, Pastor Mark Soljum and also the development of technology, I, I wanted to, to put this out there. If you have not seen this yet, it's the season of Lent. Mm-hmm. And every year, Atonement does Lenten dramas. They are online. You have to go see what's being done. It is phenomenal. Um, if you watch any of the the newscasts like the six o'clock news on ABC, NBC, CBS, or any of the, the cable news channels. Um, what is happening for the Lenten dramas that I believe Mark and Ryan here are spearheading um, along with, along with scripts being written by, by Jarl Iverson mm-hmm. is uh, it, the quality is as good <laughs> as anything you would see on cable news. It's amazing. So that that's my big push for anyone listening to my voice. I would say we're we're probably better than a small market, but not <laughs> quite as big as one of the big markets. So and we have the best uh, an- anchor in the business on on <laughs> on that news. Yeah, I I uh, that's that's my side job. I'm actually the anchor for <laughs> the news. America's anchor man, Mark Soldom. Yes, the news. Good evening and welcome to the news. <laughs> Well, anyway, I actually I wanted to model fun. it after the Muppet News, but um, <laughs> I got overruled because throwing things down and landing on top of me every week was not a good thing. This, this, as Paul, uh, Pastor Cross likes to say, this church is blessed with an abundance of riches, and the creative team is definitely a part of that. But what I'm saying is, from a year ago to what you're doing now with those mm-hmm. is, I mean, because we recorded last the Lenten mm-hmm. dramas last year too. Yeah, but it's just it's. It's pretty amazing where, where things have gone. So well, please we, go check that stuff out. We started off with the one camera on the stage uh, recording last year. And, uh, yeah, we've come a little ways. So. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. Bed. yeah, I remember uh, standing up there and uh, speaking. What was it? H- had to talk to the to the crowds or something, but the crowds were beyond <laughs> the camera. And I'm like, this is really <laughs> awkward. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we well, got it done, can, though. I think you can go to our YouTube page, and you can see those, too. Mm-hmm. And, Should uh, be able to. Compare yeah. and contrast where things were yeah. and where they are now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. It's fun. Anyway, so We're excited to have you in your new role, Mark. And, yes. And, uh, mm-hmm. Thank you. I, I would say that for those wondering, well, what what is different? Not a whole lot. I mean, my it's, My office got painted. Did Ooh. it get painted? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's different. Very good. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for the most part, uh, the leadership that you've been carrying on is going to continue. Um, and there's going to be, I'm, I'm sure, some added responsibilities. But yeah, if, if nothing else, it's the authority by this congregation to preach the word and administer the sacraments along with the leadership qualities you already have. I, um, I think it's just um, um, a milestone along the way. I, I'm, I'm very excited to continue this work and... Uh, um, God has um, been with us this far and will continue to be with us as we move forward. And 
um, I'm so thankful for atonement and, and the, the family that we have here. Uh, I call it the atonement family because I, mm-hmm. um, mostly because I love the analogy because a uh, family can be messy. Um, and, uh, but it's also the ones that you go to when, when, um, when you need them. Mm-hmm. So. What's interesting too is, is this truly is your family. Um, I feel like I'm adopted and I'm still getting to learn. I'm, I'm a two year old, I'm a toddler. Mm. <laughs> but you've been with, You've been worshiping God and part of this community of, of believers your entire life. There's a, a there's a time where you you went and went out into the world, but then you've come back. I mean, yeah, the church you were baptized. It's in. It's true. I, I grew up at Atonement. Um, uh, I left for about ten years when we lived down in the Twin Cities, um, and when we moved back up into this area to be closer to my uh, parents that were aging at the time. Yep. Um, yeah, we decided that. Um, the the pull of family and community was strong with yeah. atonement and and I, um, the force is strong with this. Yeah, <laughs> and I wish that for people because I I think um, um that that sense of community and warmth and and uh, family um you know that this is this is um this is my people that's uh, that's strong that's important yeah. and that's how we take care of one another. Excellent. Yes. It's Antioch all over again. If you don't know what Antioch is, go look it up in the Book of Acts. Maybe you'll understand mm. what I'm trying to say with that. All right. Good? Yes. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for coming on. And we are very, very excited for you. Well, thank you. And, and uh, thank to you. continue doing all the, all the what do, what do we call it, harebrained? Yeah. <laughs> harebrained, I love it. Harebrained yeah. ideas. <laughs> harebrained yeah. ideas. Yeah. I'm full of them. <laughs> all right. Well, thank, People thank you, Mark. People would say I'm full of it, but <laughs> I, I assumed that was the harebrained ideas. I, I don't say, know. Did you, did you just say you have hairy brains? Is that... <laughs> uh, my brain's hairy. Uh, the uh, the doctor's still out on that, so I'll <laughs> let you know. All right. Uh, somebody want to pray us out of here? I think I think the the Reverend Pastor uh, Mark Soljum should should take the honors today. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Heavenly Father. We uh, uh, I am grateful for this this harebrained idea called a podcast that we've been doing. Um, and I thank you for the chance to sit down every week, discuss things a little bit deeper, to uh, um, to dig into things that um, we just don't have a chance to do normally. I thank you for these people and their ability to uh, um, share that time and to dig deeper into the faith. And I thank you for the people that join us. Lord, you have, uh, um, I can see you working uh, all through my life, and I'm thank you f- thankful for that. Um, and I'm so thankful that I can see you working in other people's lives too. And uh, they may not always see it, Lord, but we know that uh, you care for us, you love us, uh, and you want uh, you want a relationship with us, and you want us to be in relationship with one another. And so that's what we want for atonement, and that's what we want for our region and our community, Lord, that we would know you, that we would trust you, uh, and that we would care for one another in a way that... Um, that I think was your original intent for the world. Um, and so we put our faith and our trust in you, and uh, we go forth today loving you and loving one another. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, if you are looking for a place to worship this weekend, you can join us uh, at atonement.live or atonementfargo.org at 9 or 10.30 or on the YouTubes. Uh, at the same time by searching Atonement Fargo. Also during Lent, you can find us at 6.30 p.m. every Wednesday night. Uh, and if I didn't say Sundays for service, Sundays mm-hmm. in the morning. Central 9 and 10.30. 9 Central Time. <laughs> if we never say Central Time. No. We probably should. Yeah. You, you know, you, you should also say that, you know, you can find this podcast on YouTube, which you may have, but you can also subscribe to it with your podcast, uh, your favorite podcast app by yes. going to thatpodcast.net. Like and subscribe, like and subscribe. That's what they always say. Do right. they still say it? They say comment, like, and subscribe yep. usually. Hit that bell oh, for notifications. Yeah, hit the that bell, bell for notifications. All right. And if you're using an, an iPhone, you have to turn on the notifications apparently. so. Really? I don't have an iPhone. Mm. All right, well, do all of that. Do all of that. <laughs> <laughs> and, all right. And keep coming back, you hear? <laughs> well, we could also say to people, since you're Lutherans, if, they're, if you're Lutheran, if you like this, smile as loud as you can. Mm. Give us a good hearty <laughs> nod. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for Sarah DeYoung, Pastor DJ Allura, and Pastor Mark Soljum, I'm Ryan Janke. Join us next week for another riveting episode of That Podcast.
That was riveting. Did I rivet last week? I don't know, but that was riveting. You're a riveter. You did. <laughs> Rosie the riveter. <laughs>